else. The Sonic Storybook series is a weird set of games. Both of these games are loved by many, but are also hated by many, and for good reason. Sonic in the Secret Rings was literally unplayable at times due to the awful motion controls, and then of course Black Knight improved on the controls and allowed you to use a joystick to move Sonic, but the movement and gameplay still felt very stiff and unsatisfying. But those are really the only major issues of these games. They have good stories, good aesthetics, and great music, but the gameplay was awful. Because of this, the Sonic Storybook trilogy trilogy was cut down in just two games. Or was it? You see, I think there's a possibility that we already have the third storybook game, and actually, we've had it for a pretty long time now. Let me explain. So yeah, in case you didn't know, there was supposed to be a third game in the Sonic Storybook series. Following the release of Sonic and the Black Knight, Sega was ready to get the ball rolling for the third game in the trilogy, presumably for the Wii U. Sega posted this poll on the official Sonic Facebook account, asking people what the next storybook game should be based on. The options were things like horror, sci-fi, western, film noir, and the winner, Greek mythology. Since Greek mythology won the poll, that led everyone to believe that the next game in the series was going to be based on Greek mythology. Now, of course, this never came to fruition because the game was cancelled, but it's interesting to think about what this game could have potentially been like. But we don't necessarily have to think about what could have been. I think that Sonic Frontiers might be the lost third storybook game. Well, not really, of course, but check this out. Sonic Frontiers is the most recent mainline Sonic game, and several people pointed out that some of its aspects resembled aspects of the storybook series of games. Let's just start simple and work our way up. Remember this render? Yeah, this one. This render was used for promotional art and the Japanese box art, but if you were on social media for the Sonic Frontiers pre-release cycle, then chances are you saw everyone talking about this thing. And for one reason in particular, this render looked identical to the one seen on the Black Knight in Secret Rings box art. The posing is even the same. It's not a huge deal, but it's just the fact that this box art continued a the theme that was established in the storybook series. But what about in-game? Let's talk about that Greek mythology thing again. Sonic Frontiers has so many themes and just general influence from Greek mythology. First, the island names. Every island in Sonic Frontiers is based on a Greek god or entity. Kronos is the god of the Titans, Ares is the god of war, Chaos is a Greek entity predating time itself, Rhea is Zeus's mother, and Oranos is the god of the sky. But not only are these islands named after Greek gods, but so is the actual story within them. Kronos being the god of the Titans makes sense for the island because this is where we first encounter the Titans. Ares being the god of war fits as well because Knuckles' story arc is all about the Echidna War and protecting his tribe, as he also teaches those same values to some of the Coco. Chaos is kind of self-explanatory, I mean chaos is a word that has many meanings so I don't really need to explain why this fits Chaos Island. Rhea Island is kind of a weird one so this might be a reach. Anyway, Rhea symbolizes birth and new life in a way, since she is Zeus's mother. What do we do in Rhea? Well, we shut down the lookout towers to free the end from its prison, giving it new life. And then Uranus. Yeah, this one doesn't make much sense. I mean, if this island was floating above the clouds like Angel Island, then it would be perfect, but I don't know why they called this island Oranos. No, I'm just kidding, of course, I do know why. Go watch this video if you want to learn more. So we've established that the islands in Sonic Frontiers take themes from Greek gods, but what else? Well, Titans are also a pretty prominent thing in Greek mythology. You fight Titans at the end of every island, and while these Titans are not related to Titans present in Greek mythology, the whole naming scheme is kind of related. You can also draw connections between the architecture and many of the symbols that are present in Frontiers. But the point is, Sonic Frontiers takes a lot of inspiration from Greek mythology, just like the scrapped third storybook game. So is Sonic Frontiers the lost third storybook game? Um, no, not at all. <laughs> it may have taken some ideas that were originally used for the third storybook game, but by no means is it the same series. Frontiers has so many things that the storybook games just didn't have, like a completely new gameplay style for example. And there are also some aspects of the storybook games that are just not present in Frontiers. The storybook-like cutscenes, the integration of motion controls, I could honestly go on. And Frontiers doesn't even have a story that's based on a previous work like the storybook games. Those games are all about Sonic getting transported into these different worlds, where the characters are different versions of themselves. That's just simply not what happens in Frontiers. Regardless, Sonic Frontiers by no means is the third storybook game. It may have taken some ideas from the original concept, but it is not the actual game that was cancelled. But that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.